pues volvemos a mi rincón favorito, este de aquí, el Cisco Studio, donde recorremos estas ideas que están creando expectación aquí en Cisco Live. Y yo sé que lo digo siempre, y puede sonar exagerado, pero esta vez sí que es verdad. Este es el campo que a mí más me apasiona de la tecnología. Vamos a hablar de cosas tan interesantes como Machine Learning, Inteligencia Artificial y el futuro de, de la tecnología. Y para eso tenemos conmigo a un gran invitado. Su nombre es Bali. Hi, Bali. How are you doing? Ah, very nice. Good to see you, Javier. I'm happy, really happy to have you here. Ah, thank you. I'm really excited because your uh, knowledge is, is really interesting for the audience. So, first of all, I would like you to tell the people that is watching this video uh, about your about you actually. Oh, excellent. Okay. Well, it's a pleasure to be here at Cisco Live Cancun. Uh, my background is I actually work in Cisco IT, and so my background for artificial intelligence is that uh, as a part of Cisco IT, we're responsible for using computer technologies and solving business problems with them. And just like our customers are using Cisco technologies to, um, to solve business problems, uh, Cisco IT uses computer technology to solve Cisco's problems. And so obviously, I think we've all seen the hype about artificial intelligence, about machine learning. It's really going to change the way that, uh, that companies use computers to solve business problems, and we're certainly using it ourselves within Cisco. That's great, it sounds really interesting. Yes. But first of all, let's put some basic ideas on the table. So first, uh, what is artificial intelligence? What is machine learning? And what is the difference between both concepts? That's a really great question, because usually when you see all the advertisements, AI and ML, artificial intelligence, machine learning, they're said in one breath, AI ML, AI ML, right? And they're really uh, kind of different things, but highly related. Machine learning is the computer's ability to basically teach itself how to solve a problem. If you actually compare it to traditional computer programming, human beings actually create the steps in traditional program that the computer follows to solve the problem. In machine learning, it's not a human being that creates the steps. Human beings feed it good data, but the computer itself tries to figure out how to solve the problem. So then the question is, What is the difference between machine learning and AI then? Simply put, AI or artificial intelligence is when a computer can actually do a task that a human being can do. And most of the AI that we use today is what we call narrow AI. In other words, it's meant to do one little thing. Mm -hmm. Self-driving car. One task, drive a car, right? Um, Alexa or Siri, one task, answer your questions about the phone. But you, most AI isn't to the point where it can actually be a human being. You certainly want to sit, you wouldn't sit there and have an interesting dinner conversation with Siri, right? So AI is all about a computer doing one simple task that a human being would normally do. AI actually uses technologies like machine learning as a part of that process. Uh -huh. So ma machine learning is a part of AI. artificial intelligence. That's right. And neural networks? It's also a part, so neural networks is a, uh, Let me kind of go into the background a little bit. So think of AI as the umbrella of technologies. Uh -huh. Machine learning is one part of the technologies that AI uses. Uh, most of the research and advancements in this technology right now is in, is in an area of, called deep learning. Uh -huh. Think of it as a, the next generation of machine learning. It's called deep learning. In deep learning, we do use a technology called neural networks. And it really, to simplify it, is think of uh, trying to teach a computer to think that the way that human beings or human brains work. Connecting neurons is really what deep learning is about, and that's what a neural network does. Wow, so somehow we're reproducing the way a brain works, but with a computer. In a very simple form, yes. In a very simple form. Yes. But it, this is something that is evolving, right? So what are the problems that these kind of technologies is able to solve yes. today and probably in the near future? So um, the, the opportunity is pretty enormous. Uh, when you think about traditional computer programs where human beings have to create the steps, there are times when those steps are hard to define. So let me just give a simple example that I use in my talk as well, right? Let's say you wanted to write a computer program to identify flowers. Uh -huh. 
uh, and you know, with a very traditional computer program, you could say if the color is red and the flower has thorns, then it's a rose. Uh -huh. But if you think about nature, I can look outside there right now, a rose, we have all kinds of colors of rose. So what would you do then? Would you write a program that says, if the color is red or white or yellow or pink or lavender, it becomes too many rules. And that's the type of problem that uh, machine learning is actually really, really good at. Those, instead of having very concrete rules to say, this is the data, can you make a prediction of what this is? That's what these technologies are really fantastic at. Wow, and with this we can, for example, win the world champions of Alpha, uh, of Go, right? Do you see Alpha oh, Go? Oh yes, yes. Wow, that was impressive. Yes, yeah, uh, so what, uh, what Javier is talking about is um, there's always been these milestones in the evolution of artificial intelligence. The first milestone was uh, whether or not a computer can beat a human being in chess. Now, that problem actually is solvable because uh, a computer can just look at all the different combinations and try to pick the best one. Uh -huh. Go actually is considered a actually much more harder problem to solve because the game itself requires some human insight, some, some strategies different than just... Instinct. Instinct, instinct yes. Uh, and so recently a computer actually beat a person in Go, which was uh, kind of a milestone in, in, in uh, artificial intelligence. Do you think that we can teach a machine to think like a human, like being, um, having instinct, common sense? Do you think some, at some point we will reach this, capaci this capacity of making a machine think like a human? You know, I think that's um, one of the key points of the talk I'm going to give at Cisco Live, and I'm really excited about uh, it. So this is a it. spoiler. Yes, this is a spoiler <laughs> alert. Come listen to my talk. But um, as an IT professional, one of the challenges I face is that there's just so many advertisements about artificial intelligence. Uh, you know, I was just at the airport, and I saw no less than 10, 10 advertisements about AI. Yes. And so the challenge is that my boss and my stakeholders, they see those same advertisements, and if you believe the advertisements, AI can pick the next you know, sports star. AI can write award-winning music or, or create Michelin chef recipes. And those are, to your question, those are things that require the human touch. And so the question is, can it do it today? Not really. I think the advertising, advertisements are a little bit exaggerated. Uh, I think AI is, um, getting to the point where we can solve some really good business problems, but can it actually replace a human being? Not yet. But in the future, what do you think you're, uh, you're feeling? In the future, future I believe we will see a big difference. Um, and the difference has to do with computer power. So when you talk about neural networks, it takes a, a lot of computer power to build and train a neural network. And uh, as an example, I'll make a Cisco commercial. Uh, in IT, we use the um, C480 ML server. And in that server has about 600 um, graphics uh, processing units, mm -hmm. or cores, right? So 600 computer cores in one box. What happens when that box can hold 6,000 cores? Or when wow. that box can hold 60,000 cores? The c possibilities are pretty amazing. So I do think in the future we'll see computers become more and more human-like. You know, maybe we'll be able to have a conversation with it. Will it ever replace a human being? Well, I hope not, right? Yeah, yes. and with uh, quantum computing, it will be even bigger. That's right, this that's right. Expansion. But now, let's move to the relationship between these new technologies and Cisco. Yes. How Cisco is integrating these ideas within the company? Yes, that's a great question. So, obviously, one way, as I mentioned, we'd make a, a purpose-built server just for machine learning. It's a really great box. But another great example is if you think about um, WebEx as one of our products. Uh, WebEx has transformed the way people meet. I pretty much spend my entire day on a WebEx call, one after the other. But we've all been there. We're on a call, and there's a dog barking in the background, <laughs> or there's a siren going off, and it's very annoying. Uh, so the WebEx team is actually using deep learning to identify sounds that are not human speech 
and automatically start to kind of mute them or lower the volume, right? So that's one Whoa. example where Cisco as a company is using deep learning to kind of improve our progress. And is this solution ready today? I believe there's certain parts of it that are already in the, in the product itself. So um, the, the keyboard tapping or some of these noises are, if you're using the, the desktop client, for the phone, it actually does do that already, and more and more will include those same technologies in the cloud, so no matter how you join the WebEx call, you'll actually start to see some of those capabilities. Wow, yeah. it sounds the future. Yes. And it's today. Yes, because, it's because the future today. Ah, artificial intelligence have uh, ar uh, arrived here yes. so fast, because uh, it was something like three years ago, four years ago, that we had the first applications, and now it's everywhere. That's right. So what's the future of of these technologies and the future of these technologies with Cisco. Okay. Yeah, I think that um, the future, and this is what the industry is saying, right, which is uh, the industry says that by 2035, which I think they actually have to rethink this now because that's a long time, it almost feels like by 2025, AI technologies will improve business productivity, and they say it's by 40%. So I think we're right on the edge of seeing AI really change the way that companies do business. And what does that mean for Cisco? I think you're going to see more and more uh, products, of our products use AI in a way that makes it much more natural to use our products. You're going to st definitely see AI, in fact it's already in the Cisco product where we use AI to look for uh, malware detection. So if there's a threat coming in, we use AI to, to kind of signal and catch that. And so you will start to see AI really be embedded across all of our products, really to help our customers have the best experience and the most secure network that they can. Some people have this known as technophobia or fear to the changes in technology. Yeah. Do you think this intelligence uh, puts some risk to humanity? How do you feel the situation and how to deal it with in the future? Yeah, that's a really great question. Um, one of my uh, peers on the, on, that will be speaking about AI, his name is Joseph Bradley, actually is going to spend almost an entire session talking about the social and cultural implications of using AI technologies. So another spoiler alert, you should also go <laughs> and see Joseph Bradley's session. Him. He's actually a fantastic speaker, by the way, so you yeah. should definitely go see that. Um, but I do think that uh, there are, this is exactly the right time that we need to be thinking about these questions. Uh, AI, uh -huh. machine learning, deep learning, very, very powerful technologies. But as with all powerful technologies, I'm going to do a Spider-Man quote here, with great, you know, with great, uh, what is it? Uh, with great responsibility, no, with great power comes great responsibility. Spider-Man. Yes, there we go. <laughs> so these technologies <laughs> give us great power, <laughs> and obviously with great responsibility as well. Uh -huh. Definitely. And uh, so we, as practitioners of these technologies, we need to uh, ensure that we're looking after uh, the ways that we properly use AI. And what are the challenges? Because uh, before this interview, we have some conversation. Yes. And you told me about learning and unlearning. Yes. I would like you to share a little bit of <laughs> your views in this point. Sure. Um, I was sharing that, uh, you know, for as powerful as uh, deep learning is in the use of neural networks, they do have actually some, um, some limitations. And one of the limitations of deep learning is that once you've trained up the network, it's actually difficult for it to unlearn something. So uh, much like you know, I mentioned that deep learning is a lot like, it operates a lot like the way that a human brain works. And as human beings, you know, what we say is, if you see something, you can't unsee it, right? Same thing with uh, deep learning. If you've trained up your neural net, it's actually very difficult to say, okay, well, that was wrong, let's take it out of the neural network. And a great example we have of that is that, this is actually a true story, it's a funny joke. Uh, my boss, who is Guillermo Diaz, the CIO, uh, we're both on Facebook, and once upon a time, someone accidentally picked his picture, but tagged it as me, Bailey Zito. And up until now, we still cannot unlearn that. So even when he posts his own picture, Facebook will tag it as Bailey Zito. And so that's just an example of, of showing where, uh, you know, yes, using deep learning neural networks works great at facial recognition, 
but just like I mentioned, once it's incorrectly programmed, it's hard to actually take it out of that neural network. This is your responsibility, our responsibility as a society, to use this technology for the good. Absolutely. And this is what we will have to shape in the near future. That's so right. thank you very much. It's been my pleasure. It's been really an exciting conversation. There are a lot of questions about this world, and I, and I can say that probably your talk, and the talk of Guillermo, uh, of uh, Joseph Bradley. Joseph Bradley yes. will be passionate, will be exciting about these, these topics. So Fantastic. I had a great you. time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Y ahora, eh, nos despedimos, después de haber mantenido esta, esta charla tan interesante, nos despedimos hasta el próxima, la próxima entrevista, donde hablaremos también de cuestiones relacionadas con la tecnología, que ya saben, que levantan pasiones, de las que nos gustan a nosotros. Pues nada, un gustazo estar aquí y nos vemos en la próxima entrevista.